Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one state official is proposing changes to Kentucky's voting system. And we take you on a tour of a new facility in Laurel County that will hopefully ease the problem of jail overcrowding in the county. Plus, flu season is hitting the Commonwealth hard this year, and in Somerset, numbers are prompting policy changes at one hospital. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6.03. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Madison Pergram. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning on this Thursday. And Madison, since our earlier conversation, I've had nothing but Girl Scout cookies floating in my head. So I mean, I love it. I asked you, I said, do they sell them around here? Where can I get them? I'm sure you can buy them outside like Walmart or Food City. Okay, I'm ready. So right, those, any, them, any, any Girl Scout cookies out there? If you know where there. they're selling Girl Scout cookies in the greater Hazard Metro area, <laughs> let Madison and I know. Hazard Metro. But... <laughs> weather this week is going to be crazy. It started off crazy Tuesday and it's just going to continue crazy throughout the week. Warm. Yeah, let's bring Brandon in. Brandon, it, I, bring, break out the t-shirt. Yeah, break out the shorts because yeah. it's just, I tell you, this roller coaster ride that is mountain weather, I want off. I, I, I don't I don't want to ride it anymore. I, want, I just want to be done with it and just have either cold weather or warm weather and not this back and forth crazy mess. But this morning, Cold once again outside the WIMT studios. You can't see much, but it is clear skies for the most part and frosty. Temperatures in the upper 20s and low 30s, but you see those temperatures are starting to climb now. Prestonsburg at 31, uh, Pikeville and Jackson at 33, and Hazard at 27, along with London Moorhead up to 30 now. Irvin, you're at 29 down to the south there, 20s and across parts of Harlan and Middlesbrough as well. Frost scrape alert this morning. A couple of extra minutes there. You're going to notice that as you head out the door. 59 though later today this should be the last morning you have to scrape your cars for quite some time or warm them up because we're going to see temperatures soar into the daytime hours and the overnight hours as well sun and clouds later today we'll talk about the extended forecast coming up here in a little bit will all righty brandon thank you well kentucky's new secretary of state wants a change to election laws michael adams says he wants a requirement to show a photo id to vote and it's proposed new law that was filed in the state Senate on Tuesday. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what it would mean. Michael Adams says he ran on this during this past year's election. He says people told him they wanted more integrity in the voting system and to curb possible voter impersonation. The newly elected Secretary of State says there is a perfect storm waiting in terms of voter fraud in Kentucky. We've got an estimated three to 400,000 people on our rolls that we know shouldn't be on our voter rolls who died or moved to some other state and then there's no proof of identity. Adams told reporters Wednesday that other states have had a lot of problems with voter impersonation and it's time for Kentucky to curb potential problems in requiring a photo ID to vote. We need a photo ID to open a bank account, to enter the state capitol, to buy Sudafed. We should also need a photo ID to vote. The bill also sets up a free way to get a government ID if they don't have a driver's license or a CDL. It's scandalous that we have second class citizens in our state who can't perform basic life functions because they don't have a photo ID due to its cost. And Adam says if for whatever reason people still have trouble getting a photo ID to vote, he says they can simply show an affidavit to show that they have an impediment to getting that photo ID and still be cleared to vote. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Now the legislation is Senate Bill 2 and sponsor Robbie Mills of Hendersonville says it's one of the Senate's priorities for the 2020 session. And in a series of tweets yesterday, University of Kentucky professor and election expert Josh Douglas says this is a solution in search of a problem. He says, quote, there is no need for a photo ID law in Kentucky elections. Photo ID laws prevent only one kind of voter fraud in person impersonation. There is zero evidence of that kind of fraud in Kentucky. Well, another Kentucky lawmaker is entering the race to take Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's seat. Representative Charles Booker officially entered the U.S. Senate race Sunday. Booker joins retired Lieutenant Colonel Amy McGrath on the primary ballot. She officially filed to run for Senate late last week. Senator McConnell is seeking his seventh term in office.
And the Pike County Fiscal Courtroom was packed with community members Tuesday night as a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution was signed. The resolution, one of several that has been approved across the region, is to show support from the county, telling its citizens the local government supports the Second Amendment. Judge Executive Ray Jones heads a court full of Democrats but says the issue is not about party lines. Most of us here grew up with guns. Uh, you know, a lot of us have veterans in our families. And, you know, the rights of law-abiding citizens should not be jeopardized or infringed because criminals commit crimes. More than 1,000 Pike County inside an online petition supporting the resolution. Jones says he has never seen as many people in the courtroom as he saw Tuesday night. New legislation would require all Kentucky school districts to install cameras to school bus stop arms. It's already illegal to pass a school bus with its stop sign extended. The law aims at holding drivers who pass by school buses accountable. School officials in Marshall County say they already have cameras on their buses. They say since making that addition, there's been a sharp decrease in the number of stop arm violations. Well, a tough budget cut is a tough pill to swallow for one Kentucky law enforcement agency. The Madison County Fiscal Court cut the Sheriff's Department budget by $300,000. He says the cuts will lead to deputies being let go, as well as not being able to replace patrol vehicles. This all comes as Madison County is facing serious financial problems and trying to address jail overcrowding. Well, inmates will be moved into the new Laurel County Correctional Center in just the next few days. And I got the chance to go inside yesterday for a tour of the facility. A vision in the making. We began with the concept of actually doing it about four years ago. The new Laurel County Correctional Center ups its capacity to 664 beds, something jailer Jamie Mosley says is desperately needed. Many of our uh, cells are, you know, severely overcrowded and too many people in there for the actual room that we have. And we got the chance for a peek inside. This is where the public will come in. They'll do their visitations. Um, currently we have five visitation booths here. I think we have close to 15. Moving on to the kitchen and laundry room. We have a prep area on the right and we have a cleanup area on the left. And then on to the isolation hallway. When they have to be segregated from the general population, they'll go into a single man dorm. Um, and this just houses one uh, inmate at a time. With the rest of the cells made to fit 10 people, but throughout the facility there is one key component, technology. We're excited to utilize that equipment and hopefully it makes us uh, more accurate and uh, just helps us do our job even better than we're doing it now. From mobile cell checks to touch screen cameras. We can go to, it pulls up that, it's a 365 degree fisheye camera. And even iPads. They can put in sick calls, put in grievances, um, access the law library. They do all that from right here. All part of a thoroughly thought out plan. You know, finally we've, after about four years, we're, we're here. To create a safer and better environment for everyone involved. Now the public has a chance to see the facility for themselves tomorrow at 6 and 7.30 p.m. Well, the growing amount of flu cases have caused a hospital in southern Kentucky to restrict visitors. The Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital has restricted visitation to immediate family members only. You are not allowed to visit if you have any flu-like symptoms like a fever or a cough. No visitors under the age of 12 will be allowed. If you have to visit a patient, you need to report any flu symptoms to hospital staff. The guidelines are effective immediately. And a resort on Lake Cumberland is making progress after a fire destroyed part of it. Conley Bottom Resort posted these pictures on Facebook. You may remember a fire damaged the store, cafe, and part of the dock last May. It happened right before Memorial Day weekend, and the resort plans to have all repairs complete by this summer. Temperatures chilly this morning, but already starting to head up across the region. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Still in the 20s and 30s across parts of the area, but we're starting to see uh, temperatures get closer to freezing in some areas. Above freezing there in Jackson and Pikeville, both at 33 this morning. Wise at 37. Logan at 34 and Williamsburg right there at freezing at 32. Temperature change. Everybody a little bit cooler this morning with the exception of Wise. A little bit warmer, but they've even been dropping just a couple of degrees there in the last few minutes. Your 12-hour planner. We are going to see those temperatures climb into the 50s and maybe close to 60 today and very mild conditions will continue all the way into the weekend. Madison. 
Thank you, Brandon, and thank you for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, we take you to Floyd County, where a special guest on New Year's Eve became an inspiration for an unexpected project. And at a Wisconsin Animal Shelter, employees are pleading for someone to adopt one of their dogs that has been there for nearly two years.